Roasting is a moment of truth for coffee. It can either unlock the unique flavors that the producer has worked so very hard to develop, or it can reduce the flavors to generic, bland, and mediocre. But today, I am interrogating Boris at our Wollongong Roastery to see his process, find out the most common mistakes, and how we can avoid buying coffee that just doesn't deliver the goods. So Boris, let's start with the basics of roasting. What is your process? When we're roasting coffee, we've got two things we need to consider. We've got our raw coffee seeds. Yep. Uh, we call them beans, but they're seeds. And then we've got our roasting machine. A roasting machine generally revolves around a, a drum style roaster or an airflow roaster. In a drum roaster, you literally have a big cast iron drum. So what happens is when we put the coffee into the drum, the drum is spinning and there's little arms on the inside of that drum and the beans roll around the drum. The drum is heated by gas burners and then the energy from that drum goes into the coffee seeds as it spins around the drum. The other thing that is happening in that environment though is we're also heating air. We are effectively roasting the coffee with both the heat and energy of the drum and the heat and energy of the air. After we decide we've roasted the coffee to the point where we want it to be, we open the roaster up and we drop that coffee into a cooling tray. It's really important that this happens at the right time because when we drop the coffee out into the cooling tray, it isn't actually finished roasting at that point. That's why we wanna drop it into a cooling tray and we suck air through it and we move the coffee around because we're trying to pull as much heat out at this point because we wanna lock it in at that point. What dictates when you know it's time to drop it? What, what are the variables that are in play? So a lot of roasters look at what is happening to that seed as it becomes a roasted coffee and we follow a curve and that curve represents the temperature of the mass of coffee seeds in that drum. We've got this nice hot drum We've brought it up to a temperature and we call that our charge temperature. We drop those seeds into the drum and what happens is the temperature in that environment starts to drop because the seeds themselves are nowhere near as hot as the drum and they start absorbing energy. There is a point where the curve effectively plateaus and starts to come back up. That's our turning point. During this point, we are working with an endothermic reaction. Okay, what is endothermic? <laughs> so an endothermic reaction is where we are applying heat to something and it is absorbing the heat. In this path up, we get to a point where the amount of energy that is going into the seed overtakes the amount of energy in the ambient environment and we hit critical mass. And then we actually get an exothermic reaction, the opposite of endothermic, and it's where there's too much energy in that mass and it starts to escape. And this is called first crack. And then what happens is we go back to an endothermic reaction where the energy starts to be absorbed again by the coffee bean. And it's during this phase of energy absorption that we have a chain of reactions called the Maillard reaction. And that's what we are really aiming to control as a roaster. So this is, this is the thing you're looking for when you're roasting coffee? Well, it's the thing that happens whenever we roast coffee. Okay. Um, it's the same thing that happens when we toast bread or we cook a steak. The Maillard reaction is the caramelization of sugar. If the roaster is skilled and sets up the environment for that development phase, we set up a chain of reactions and we get a maximum amount of sugar development. So what's more important? Is it the quality of green coffee? or is it about perfecting the roast from a roaster's perspective? Look, I'm gonna be honest, it's both. Yeah. But there are caveats to that. A really skilled roaster can take an average coffee and make it taste better. But really, you know, we are working with what we have. But if we're not working with something that's really good, it is very difficult to make it exceptional. When someone is starting out in roasting, what are some of the common roaster mistakes? I think understanding that different coffee seeds react to heat differently is, is something that it, it takes time, you have to learn that. You know, there are little tricks you can do. You can buy a density checking device so that you can check the density of your coffee seed. Also understanding the best way to approach the roast in your specific roaster. Yep. So, you know, um, when you're on looking online in forums, things like that, you're gonna see other people putting up graphs talking about what they do. If you don't have the same roaster as them, you can't just copy them. You won't get okay. the same result. Right. So you need to learn your roaster and you need to go back to the fundamentals of what you're doing. Thank you so very much, Boris, for spending your time with us and showing us behind the scenes of a roaster. And hey guys, anything you'd like to know about roasting next time, definitely leave a comment down below and we can look into that for a future video. 
Until then, enjoy your roasted cup of coffee and stay stoked.